Hello and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract and uh, let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com and we'll scroll on down to the bottom and press on school. We've done all of these lessons, videos for all of these lessons, including three videos for lesson eight. We're on lesson eight still. Three videos. One was on parallax, one was on general motion, and the other was using a sprite and accelerator and a whole bunch of things to make a scene go. So we're going to drop back and do something perhaps a bit more practical, and that is see how we can go from page to page using the Pages class. That's handy on mobile as well, where we can swipe from page to page. In the next, in the next video, uh, we'll also take a look at the layout control, which allows us to do responsive design on the canvas to layout sizes for different, different screen sizes. Um, and then we'll probably do a few more fun ones after that in the controls. There's all sorts of controls to look at. Sound good? Okay, let's go take a look at some code now. We'll hit the Zim to the main page here and press code. We'll, should we copy a minimal template? Yeah, let's copy the minimal template this time. All right, we'll reduce this down. Come on in here and paste. Although the minimal template, um, it doesn't record the stage width, stage height, which I like to have, but we can add that. It's not too, too big a deal. We'll call this lesson 08-4. We're bringing in CreateJS and Zim. We're fitting, and uh, as mentioned, we'll want to probably copy these and say const stage width and stage height equals the frame width and the frame height. There we go. And let's begin our pages. Now, pages are just containers. So if we want to see a page, we add the container to the stage. If we don't want to see the page, we remove the container from the stage. We can do that as well as we could animate those containers, like slide them from side to side or fade them in and out. Let's see how we can go from one page to another in a very basic way by making two containers with a, a button or a link between the two. All right, so const page one is equal to a new container. And here's where we use that stage width, comma, stage height already, dot add to the stage. Let's put a backing on there, new rectangle, and it will be page one. <laughs> How are my fingers doing? Da width and page two, oh, page one, comma, uh, dot, sorry, dot height. Oh, goodness, I almost copied my exact finger movements from the time before there. All right, and where do we add this rectangle? Oh, let's make a color too. Blue. <laughs> Blue. Uh, alrighty. Blue. And we will say dot add to. Not the stage. Not like we did before. Not just the default stage. But we're adding to page one. That's important. We want to put everything that we make here on page one. We can also make a new button. Or why don't we make an arrow down at the right hand corner. We could make a button that has an arrow as a backing, and then another arrow with a different color as a roll backing. And we could set the label to quote quote, and then it would be a button that we, you know, that we could use. Or we can just sort of make our own arrow by saying a new triangle. And we can give it a color of purple. Like that will keep the default sides. We will dot rotate this 90 degrees because triangles point up and we want to point to the right. And we can say dot hub and put in a color, pink. So there's the dot hub with a pink color uh, when we hover over it. And then we'll dot, dot pose it, pose, <sighs> say 30 or 40, 40, 40 from the right comma bottom on page 
one there. Oh, should we drop that down. There we go. And we haven't even put the click event on it. So this is it positioned. Let's have a look. Open in browser. Nice. And when we hover over it, it goes pink. It doesn't go anywhere at the moment. Well, there's our little, hey, let's let's go to the right side. You, we can make another one for the left, but we won't bother at the moment. All right, super. Now, if we're going to tap on that, dot tap, we don't use the on. I mean, we could use an on, but we couldn't chain it. So don't chain the on. We'll lose reference to the arrow if we should we need it. So we can dot tap it and in the tap, we'll call an arrow function, <laughs> coincidentally. And then that arrow function, we can say, go to page two. Well, we haven't made a page two. So let's make a page two by just copying all of this stuff. Tabbing that back. Watch your tab there. When I paste it, it pasted it on this level. We want to come back a level so we're even there. And then this becomes page two, page two, page two, page two. Anything else? Blue, we'll make it green. Let's go to a green page. And uh, where did we add the right page two? There's where we added the arrow. And that seems fine. Uh, now this tap then will we'll, uh, hide or remove the page one. So page one dot remove from. And it will add page two. Page two dot add two. Okay, so uh, not rocket science, and we probably need a stage or a sage.update. Please, sage, we don't need this. There we go. And we would have something similar down in here, except this would be page two, and that would be page one. What do you think? So not rocket science, but a little bit annoying. All right, uh, we could automate it if if it were really this simple, but maybe it's not this simple. Green. Uh, why do we see green? Hmm. Uh, I know. Page two, we shouldn't add that yet. Like that. So we take that off. This container hasn't been added. These are still added to page two. Great. And they're added to page two, but page two itself is not added to the stage. Only page one is added. So that should be blue now. Good. And when we click here, it goes to uh, green, and we click here, and it goes to blue, etc. All right, that seems to work. Now we don't have the swipe in. So Zim has a swipe class, so we could add a swipe object. Uh, let's see, how do we do that? I think we make a new swipe object, and we say, please make page one swipeable. And then we do one for page two and so forth. And then these would be swipeable with an event. We could do it just like the tap event. Matter of fact, we'd probably abstract this out to a single function. And in the tap, we would call the function. And in the swipe, we would call the function. So it gets even more to be able to handle swiping. And it's a little bit annoying because you might swipe up to get to a help page. You might swipe to the left to get to, you know, page four or something if we may or maybe we'll make three pages to get back to page three and swipe to the right to get to page two and each time you go okay well let's see you come on down here we gotta swipe this way to get to that and it just becomes this whole schmozzle of uh different directions and <laughs> so forth to manage so that's why we made zim pages but here's what it would look like if we were to, to do it manually. We haven't really made any content. The content, it's not too bad. The content then would all go in here saying, oh, add this to the page, add that to the page. It could be a hundred different things, and it will all move with the page. Oh, speaking of moving, we'd probably want to animate it. So animate it to the left, animate the new page in. So rather than just a remove from and an add to, we'd have to add an animation in here. So again, not difficult, but just more and more and more. All right, so let's see how we can do this with the pages object, shall we? Yay, the pages class. We've got the same triangle right across the board. So we could, if we wanted to abstract the triangle, well, there's not much in that triangle. I don't know if it's worth it. We could then clone the triangle across the way, but there, there's not much to the triangle here. So we'll just leave that there. 
However, we won't do the tapping. So we'll let we'll, we'll do this thing called hotspots. We'll handle that with hotspots in one place and see what you think about that. So no tapping in, in any of the cases. So we have our pages, we have our, our animations. We're just not going to say where we're going with them just yet. Great. We made page two. We may need access to these triangles though. So let's store it on page one, page one dot um, arrow button, button is good enough, is equal to that new triangle. And here we can say page two dot button is equal to a new triangle. I don't think we're going to need access to the rectangle in the backing. So that's fine there. Now we could have said const button two, const, or sorry, that would have been const button one, const button two, etc. And then you've got a logo and there might be const logo one, const. Yeah. So rather than keep on making a bunch of constants with different numbers on them, instead we could say, uh, we could just add it as a property. If you think about it, this button is a property of page two. This button is a property of page one. So we're doing it like that. JavaScript is dynamic. It allows us to add our own properties. There is no property called button on a container, but we've just added one. We've just made one. That's called dynamic. Other languages, other programming languages don't necessarily let you do that. You would have to specify that the container class is dynamic. Uh, here, all JavaScript classes or objects are dynamic. There may be a way to set it so it isn't, I can't remember. But anyway, uh, for the most part, we're lucky that that's there. However, it can lead to some problems. For instance, if, if there were a button in a container, we've just overwritten it, and maybe that will break the container. Uh, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy that JavaScript is, uh, the, the classes and objects are dynamic. Alrighty, next. The pages object. Woot woo! Let's see it. Yeah. So I don't know if we'll need a reference to it, but we can say const pages is equal to a new pages object, like so. And once again, like the other things that we've been working with, the other controls, we have a bunch of things that we want to control, and those are all roughly the same types of things. They're all pages. So we would expect us to pass in an array here, which we do. So we keep, uh, we pass in the array, and this is an array of pages objects. So the first thing in the pages object would be which page we're dealing with, page. So a reference to our container, the object. I mean, it doesn't have to be a container. It could be a tile, for instance, but usually it's a container. And uh, our first one would be page one, comma. Then we say, which way do we want to swipe? And so what are we doing for our swipes? And this is uh, an array that has which, uh, when, which page is to the left, which page is to the right, which page is to the top, which page is to the bottom. So that would be the page to the, how many pages do we have? Let's make one more page. We'll do three pages. <clears throat> it's a little bit easier to see what we're doing than two pages, I think. And we'll call that page three, and page three, and page three, and page three. Once again, it's uh, possible that this could be done in an array, but probably, or sorry, in a loop, but probably not. Beyond this, the pages will most likely be different. If we wanted to, we could have kept this triangle separate, possibly, but then if we swipe the page, the triangle wouldn't go with it. It would sort of sit in the corner as a separate thing. You could do that with a logo too. You could keep a logo or a, a bar at the bottom, a tab bar at the bottom that never swipes, but I actually prefer them to swipe with the page. I think it just looks more natural if the whole page swipes rather than sort of the central area. It's up to you though, and maybe I haven't really tried the central area all that much, so perhaps I don't know. Anyway, so which, which page will be on the left? If we're on page one and we want to go to the page on the left, then that will be page three. 
do we change it? Yeah, page three, oops, page three. Probably be the same thing though, the height's all the stage height. Okay, yeah, that looks good. Alrighty, so that will be page three. Now, which page will be on the right-hand side? So if we're swiping left, on the right-hand side, the page is page two. Page two. And then if we swipe up or, or down, uh, nothing's actually going to happen, so I think we can just leave those blank. Maybe what we can do, let's make something happen. We'll make, a, we'll make it call a help event. So now we'll be able, if we put a string in there, whenever we swipe, if we receive um, the word help, then we can go to the help, like maybe a help pane. We could try that. <clears throat> So whether we swipe up or down, we'll get help. You could change that up. You could make it swipe up and down and go to page two and or three and two as well. So it doesn't really matter which way you swipe. Uh, it goes to a different page. Or you could have completely different pages. I've had grid structures where you, you're swiping up and down and across. There's also nested structures where you have to change the page's object as you, as you swipe. So it can get quite complicated, but still manageable. So any swiping to page structures is available for us. All right, that's the first one. Let's make the second one. We'll copy that and paste. <clears throat> And this page will be page two. We will, the page on the left now will be page one. The page on the right is page three. And we'll keep the helps and we'll copy that into page three as well. Page three, hmm, this is page three. Page two is on the left. Page one, I guess, is on the right. Yep, and helps. Great. And that should be that. Now our pages should swipe. Now the arrows don't work yet, but let's try the swiping. So we refresh here. A little bit of an error. F12. No error. Ah, right. Um, we don't. What pages does is it sort of takes everything away. We it takes all of the pages off the wherever off whatever container you pass in. By default, that will be the stage. Takes them all off. And by default, it, um, it doesn't show anything until you add the pages object. So dot add to, we'll add the pages object. This allows us to add and remove various page objects at certain times. Another thing that we might want to see before we even test this out, this will just, if we swipe, it'll just go there immediately. We might want a transition. So I think the default transition is none. But we'll set the default trans, or we'll set the transition to slide. So now the transitions will slide. We can give it a time as well. If we want to see it sliding, we could make it a slower slide, like one second to slide. That's pretty long. Okay, which is another nice thing, thing that the pages gives us is different types of transitions. So there we go. We see it, and I swipe, and there it slides. Uh, right, we forgot to change the color on that page. Hmm, green, we've got purple, how about yellow? So page three is yellow. Great, we'll make that shorter, 500. And we'll refresh here. Refresh, we slide, off it goes. Cool, huh? Slide the other way, and off it goes. Slide up and down, we aren't getting anything because we didn't do anything with it yet. Uh, okay, so now let's get our button going. So we have a thing called um, a, a hotspot or hotspots. And if we want to operate multiple hotspots, then we make a hotspots object. So uh, const hot spots <laughs> is equal to a new hot spots like that. And that's multiple spots that all work the same way. So if we've got multiple hotspots that all work the same way, we probably want an array here to pass in what those hotspots are going to be doing. This is just a way to consolidate our navigation into one place as opposed to having it out on pages all over. What we're getting ready for is this thing called model view controller. 
Model view controller is a way, it's a design pattern. It's a it's something common that we that we when we build something and as it gets more complicated, we say to ourselves, oh, wouldn't it be nice to divide up our app into parts so that it's not all one big page? So we have a model view controller. Anything to do with the data is in the model. Anything to do with your what you're seeing is in the view. So pretty well all this page stuff would be in a view. And then any controls would be in the controller. So that would be your events and things to go in between places and what, what happens when. So this will split the controls from the, the pages, from the view. If we put all of our events in the view, then it's not split. We, you know, we have to keep on hunting around for, for any events. So uh, that's the idea. Um, now we've got some hotspots here. So it's a hotspot object. And the first one is, is what page is the hotspot on? Because if we've got a bunch of pages, we're going to want to know which page are we making a hotspot for. A hotspot is like, uh, I don't know if you've ever used it in HTML. There's a thing called, um, you know, what the heck is that called? Image map. So if you have an image, you can make a map for it like out of rectangles and circles uh, or ovals, you can make a map saying, when you press on the image here, go to this URL. When you press on the image here, go to that URL. And so we can do the same thing too. When you press on this on the page, we could give it a rectangle. And when you press on something in that rectangle, then we're going to go somewhere. So you don't even, you could have a canvas image uh, with no individual components or anything. And you could lay out a bunch of rectangular areas on there that will allow you to click those areas and do something. So the first thing is, though, is which page. So here are the hotspots on page one. And the rect for that is now what we've done is sort of simplified it a little bit by just saying, hey, if you pass in an object, then it will take the bounding box of that object as, as the rectangle, and that's rect. So the uh, first one that we want is the button right here, page one's button. So we're going to turn page one's button into a hotspot, like so. Page one's button. Yay! And then you say, what do you want to call? So a callback function. What do you want to do? What function do you want to do when somebody presses on that button? And that would be um, an arrow function, arrow function. And in that arrow function, we're going to say where we want to go. So that would be the pages object. This is another thing the pages object can do, is it handles moving from one page to another for you so that the transitions are kept. You can also capture events as before something is animated, after something's animated. You can find out which page you've just come from, which page you're just going to. So all of this is given to us by the pages object, which can be quite handy. So we can say pages.go, and inside of here, we say which page we want to go to when we press this arrow. In this case, we want to go to page two, and that will be heading over to the right side. Like that. So it's on the right side. So we can say right in the go which way we want the transition to, like which way do we want it to slide. And you can also specify a few other things right there to override default transitions. But that will probably be good. Shall we check it out? The other thing we might want to do is when we get a bunch of these, perhaps we'll run it all on one line. It, sometimes looks a little bit easier to understand what's going on. So we're here, we come on down, there's the button, we press the button, and indeed off it goes to the second page there. <clears throat> That's good. Let's do a test. Let's make it go to page three instead. So now we refresh here. This should swipe to the yellow page, and indeed it swipes to the yellow page. Okay. Let's drop this all on one line, or not drop it, I guess. We'll prop it, prop it up all on one line, like so. The next thing would get a comma after it. So this was the first page's object. Copy, paste, and paste. <laughs> what the heck that was. All right, so there's uh, this is the arrow on page three. 
two, page three, page two, page three, and then this one's going to go to page three, and this one will go to page one. Like so. Okay. So that copy and paste through that was pretty easy compared to going and doing all the copy and paste up here. I mean, it's kind of the same, but it's nicely laid out for us. The other thing is now we can see this is really the only information that's going to be changing. It becomes quite easy to build if we've got like 100 pages. We could build this in a loop without much difficulty, and we certainly have before in various apps. And it's nice and tidy, all sitting in here or in here. Oh, sorry, I was pointing to the wrong place. Very similar. We can build these in a loop. So we can build those in a loop too if we want. And uh, other, otherwise, three pages, no big deal. A little bit of copy and paste. All right, let's try it out, see if it works. We refresh here and press, goes to the green, press that, goes to the yellow, press the yellow, goes to the blue. Great, we can swipe backwards. How about the swiping up and down? How does that work? So when we swipe up and down, we're going to want to capture a page event, uh, or sorry, an event on the pages. There, there is a page event, by the way, and that's that's how you would do it. Uh, whenever the page tran uh, transitions, I think there's a page transitioned. There's a page event. Uh, you can look it up in the docs. The events are always at the bottom of the docs. But if we specify our own custom event here, that's what we've done. Then it looks like this, pages.on. <laughs> we can do it, help. So whenever the help gets called, we'll call this arrow function, like so. And the arrow function then does something. Uh, we might make a pane here, uh, const help page is equal to a new pane. Could be a page, maybe. Maybe we swipe to a, a, full, a whole different page. A new pane, and that pane will have a label. Uh, I will just put in a default. I am help, like that. <laughs> So there we go, and therefore we could say uh, help page dot show. We'll pop up that pane. I don't know if I'm help's going to fit on it. Uh, actually, I think it's the size first, so we may have to put in a size here. We can make it fit then, 500 by 300. And that's going to be white. There's probably some color at some point as well. Let's try it right though, see how it's looking so far. We refresh here. We press, I swipe up, I am help. I close the pane, I swipe down, I am help, or vice versa. Here's the help here too. Now it may be that you want different help for a different page. What do you say? Is that the case? So if that were the case, you can get the page with the event object here. So E, uh, our event object will give us e.target.page, that would be one. Um, I guess we could do that. Uh, we can find out a name of a page. So to find out names of pages, you sort of manually do it. There's page one. You would say page one dot name is equal to whatever this page is. This is the blue page. Blue page, like so. Let me copy that and put that on here. So there we are again, making a custom property. And this one is the green page. Although I suppose we could have asked for e.target. Oh, we'd have to ask for the rectangle somehow. We don't have a reference to the backing. Aside from uh, get child, that it would be like the the page e dot target dot get child at sorry e dot target dot page dot get child at zero would be this backing rectangle. We could ask for its color instead of doing this. But <clears throat> it's no big deal. Page three and what page is this? The yellow page. Yellow pages. <laughs> and you may not even know what a yellow page is. Ah, uh, yes the youth of today. They 
have not experienced paging through yellow pages with their fingers, letting their fingers do the walk. <laughs> How on earth did they come up with that one? <laughs> letting your fingers do the walk. They turn this thing, you know, laborious, oh my gosh, alphabetical order and some big, huge, like, dictionary kind of thing. And they're going, and they made that fun by saying, let your fingers do the walking. Oh, yeah. You know, ah. All right. So there's a help page show. And, uh, oh, we would want to change the text of the of the pane then. So that would look like pane.text is equal to help for. And then we'll concatenate, concatenate on e.target. E dot target is our, our pages object, so actually we don't have to even do that. But e dot target um, is the pages object dot, and then the page dot name. Like that help for ah, that might do it. <laughs> Let's try it. Okay, and then we go and show it. Refresh here. Uh, I suppose not because I'm not getting much. I'm getting an error maybe. Pain is not defined. Help page dot text. There we are. And we refresh here. Help for blue page. Help for green page. Help for the yellow pages. <laughs> okay. Uh, cool, huh? So we, we maybe nip through that in the end. I don't even think we used E, but E.target would represent your pages object. And we're getting the page property. So the pages object at any given time, whatever page we're on, its page property will give us a reference to either, either page 3, page 2, or page 1. So whatever page we're on, that's the page. Pages.page. So pages.page, .page, if we get pages.page .page and ask for the name, it's going to give us blue page or uh, green page or yellow page. So when we ask for pages.pages .pages name property, it gives us that. Isn't that neat? There we go. So I think that's a pretty fun look through. Uh, taking a look at uh, learning JavaScript with creative coding. Now you can put things on multiple pages. Uh, we didn't really put much on the page, but you certainly could on one page. Oh, now I feel guilty. <laughs> okay, it's just, it popped back. Uh, let me just show you, for instance, on this page right here, we could put um, a new tile like that, and we'll tile new circles, our uh, new circle. Uh, comma, how many of them are we going to do? How about five of them? And we'll do them four, and we'll give the spacing of uh, 10 and 10. There we go. We dot center that on page one. So page one has a tile. We go into page two, and we will make a new radial interface. A new radial interface dot center on page two semicolon. On page three, we will make a new mm, slider dot center on page three. Page three. So there, we've just made some content. And once again, we could, if we wanted to, grab all this stuff that we've been making, our assets, or not assets, but our, our, our view, the stuff that we're viewing, and we could put those all up uh, in another file and organize things that way. So here's page one. Something went wrong. Nothing on page two, nothing on page two. Did I save this up? <laughs> Why don't I see them? <laughs> Let's have a look. A new tile centered on page one. Definitely. A new radial centered on page two. Yeah, that looks good. Is it just called radial? There's a radial menu I think I was thinking of. But, and a new slider. So do we get any error messages going on there? F12. Nope. A refresh. And huh, I don't see them. What's going on? Page one.
And that button showing up. Oh, you see what we've done? We put all of them underneath the backing rectangle. So <laughs> there's the backing rectangle. I would recommend not doing. So we've uh, now moved them up in front of the backing rectangle. Uh, who's a clever boy? Yep, yep, yep. Even the slider. <laughs> nice. There we go. So now we make the backing rectangle first and put all of the stuff we want to show on top of the backing rectangle. That helps. So there's that. Here's a radial menu. Here's a slider and so forth. Then we slide back to the slider. We get some help. Help for this radial menu. Nice, huh? There. Okay. And now we can come on back and say, hey, this has been Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract, that guy there, and also this guy here. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So come back uh, for the next video. Next video, we'll take a look at the layout class. Works hand in hand. You can have a bunch of different layout classes on different pages to make your mobile app if you so desire. We'll see you next time. Ciao!